it's a key decision whether to vaccinate or not. And if not, what else might you do? All of us who go one way or another are invariably trying to do the best for our children. But with different information, different backgrounds, we make different decisions. And I think for many people, the critical thing is, do we have enough information to truly be in a position to make an informed consent? What does it mean um, when we talk about being informed? What information do we think should be provided? And by and large, the information that is provided is, is way too little. Typically, when people are at the critical point of choice about deciding to vac vaccinate or not, assuming we're not in a, a part of the world where, where there is mandatory vaccination, they are usually told the vaccine is safe and effective. In our society, we attach an enormous amount of power to the information that we get from our doctors, from our physicians. The reality is for people who are going to their physician to get information about the risk and benefits of vaccines, they actually are going to people who have very limited information. And that, of course, is a, is a major problem when it comes to um, achieving informed consent. The information comes from um, particular sources linked to major health authorities like the CDC or the National Health Service in the UK, where the trials are extremely limited. Very, much, very often, the assumptions being made as a result of the conclusions of these trials do not reflect the available data. What we see within the literature are very, very clear biases. Some of the biggest, most powerful and influential studies and systematic reviews and even meta-analyses have often been conducted by individuals and research groups that have very specific and often declared interests in the vaccine industry. One of the issues that, that is of great concern for many parents is the fact that they witness a temporal association, an association in time between the vaccination event and the development of symptoms. When they present this information to a primary care physician, they are very often told, no, it couldn't possibly be the vaccine. In the case of HPV, where you have two or even three vaccinations, what many of the um, purportedly vaccine-damaged children have experienced is a successively more severe reaction throughout the series. And it is quite astonishing to us that this is not taken seriously by the medical establishment. There is a huge gap in what we know about the information. One of the reasons that this film is being made is for the simple reason is that there are a lot of people out there, whether they are vaccine damaged, um, individuals or people who believe that their children are being damaged from vaccines or whether there are scientists working in the field that shows that there is a major gap between what governments and what health authorities are telling us and actually what is available out there. And hopefully this film will make a, an important contribution to encourage health authorities and individuals to get information that allows truly informed consent to be made.